are chosen and we are sent. Every scripture reading today irrefutably tells us this. They don't say some are chosen or those people are chosen. They say that we are chosen. God calls each of us to missionary discipleship. What does this mean? It means that we follow Jesus, we live out of our faith, and we go out to the world to do that. Like Amos, we are called to listen and to be faithful to God. Amos makes the high priest of Bethel uncomfortable. And so he says, go out from Bethel, go prophecy somewhere else. And Amos responds, I didn't ask for this. I wasn't even trained for this. But God called me, and I went. In the second reading, Paul also tells us that God has chosen us. But most explicitly, just like the disciples in the gospel. As Christians, we are sent out by Jesus to carry his message through our actions and our words. We don't have to be rock stars. The disciples doubted. They were fearful. Sometimes they completely missed the boat on what Jesus was trying to tell them. I love this gospel. Jesus calls us anyway. First, he calls us to leave our comfort zone, to go out and help others. Sometimes we think, well, I'll help so-and-so if she asks me for it. But Jesus sends the disciples out to meet people where they are. And he doesn't just say, leave behind your favorite book or turn off your cable TV. He says, put down your money, your backpack, food, change of clothes, leave everything. We are called to trust and to follow Jesus with radical abandon and faith. I'm a Mary Nolay missioner. We're a Catholic organization that is predominantly lay people. We respond to the invitation to work in other countries, to walk with our global family, and to witness to the gospel through our lives and our actions. It is just one way to respond to God's call to discipleship. And so I ask myself, what does this gospel ask of me? What are my security blankets today that Jesus calls me to leave at home and to not be distracted by? What are the things that I might use to buffer me from direct contact with others or that get in my way of truly connecting with people? My cell phone? My academic credentials? My skin color? My nationality? And how can I disarm myself so that, like in the gospel, I can truly approach others and be unencumbered enough to accept their hospitality, to meet people where they are so as to walk with them? For 30 years, my mission has taken me to Central America, to Brazil, and to Kenya, as well as different places in the United States. I have been constantly blessed and challenged to leave behind my security and to leave my comfort zone. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, I accompanied women who lived in the streets. One day, I came upon Maria, Isa, and Ilda. They were standing in front of a street hot dog vendor. Isa turned to me and she said, Today is Ilda's 70th birthday. I know, I said. Maria Isa turned to the hot dog vendor and she said, three hot dogs, please. I immediately thought to myself, I'm not so sure I want to eat a scary hot dog from a street vendor. And I said out loud, no, thanks, just two. Isa gave me a stern look and she said, three hot dogs. Because I have learned to listen with my heart and not just my head. And because I've learned to meet people where they are and to let go of my own clutter and expectations, I did not lose this secret, sacred invitation. I realized that even though Isa had to dig in the bottom of her purse to find enough change to buy three hot dogs, that she was inviting me and I had no right to refuse her hospitality. And more importantly, um, I was grateful that I heard the invitation to break bread and hot dogs with both of them. We are sent out to share the gospel. I also used to train people in Brazil to do pastoral visits in prisons. And often when I asked them what led them to want to do this, they would say, 
I want to bring Jesus to the prisoners. But honestly, Jesus was there long before any of us. And I think his call to us is to go out of our, out of our homes and meet him in the people that we, we encounter on the streets. There are many other nuggets in this gospel, enough to last a lifetime. We are sent in twos. We need the company of others, and we need the accountability of working with others. Additionally, Jesus sends us to invite others to conversation. And as he says, when they are not interested, to shake the dust from our sandals and move on. And sometimes we are called to take a prophetic, maybe unpopular stand in the face of injustices, just like Amos and the disciples and Jesus did. It means to stretch beyond what we think we can do or beyond what we think we have the courage to do or say. My own invitation to missionary discipleship has taken me far beyond emotional, cultural, and geographical boundaries. Sometimes though, Jesus sends us as disciples right to our own backyard, to our own community, our own school, even in our own homes. The call is to radical but profound faith, to put down our security blankets, even those we feel are most necessary, to trust and to go out and meet God and others. To do that, we must listen carefully and deeply to our God, and then we must act. These readings invite every one of us today to be missionary disciples. They tell us that we are chosen, blessed, redeemed, sealed, and destined by God. It's far too easy to slide by and think, yes, that's true, but not me, or not today. But God calls each one of us, and the invitation is now.